Hi, this is Lainey Cameron, and I am so excited to be here today with Barbara Conroy. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Lainey. How are you? I am fabulous, and I loved your book so much, so I'm so happy to be here with you. Um, Thank we're going to talk you. today about Nowhere Near Goodbye, which you can see on the bottom of the screen there. It's your debut novel. We were just talking about the fact that it's your debut novel in your 70s, right? That's true. That's true. I'm a 70 year old debut. I love and this. I'm proud of it. You're proud of it. And I love that. I, hopefully we'll talk more about that. So tell me where you're joining us from. Let's start there. OK, I am central Pennsylvania. Um, very little uh, neighborhood that is it has like little shops that you can walk to in a restaurant and it's very sweet. There's like maybe 600 houses and it's lovely. It's very, very nice. It sounds adorable. And let's talk first about the inspiration for Nowhere Near Goodbye, because I think this is one of my favorite origin stories ever. So tell us more about where the idea for Nowhere Near Goodbye came from. Okay. Um, Years ago, I was working in a health insurance company and I had a very good friend and her granddaughter, which again shows you how old I am, her granddaughter was diagnosed with GBM, glioblastoma. I'd never even heard of the tumor and my friend, she was devastated. And I had always wanted to write a book, and, but I was working full time and I didn't have the time to write a book, but the thought never left my head. So when I finally retired, I knew this was the book I wanted to write. And the main thing I wanted to say was anytime you read anything about glioblastoma, you read how rare it is. Well, in my mind, it's not really that rare. Um, I know four people who have been diagnosed and died from glioblastoma. It just broke my heart. It, it's, it's just not a disease that is that rare. And I just wanted to bring it to light. But this book is right. In this book, you have a doctor who's going to work on making her life's work solving this disease. So I love the concept yeah. that, you know, the book starts sad because this doctor loses her childhood friend when she's very little, her friend Kate, right? The interesting thing is this woman is going to dedicate her life to solving this disease. And I thought it was really interesting because you, you, you in fiction created a situation that you couldn't make real in reality, right? You can't solve this disease, but you can create a doctor who can try and solve this disease in fiction. Exactly. Exactly. And and I did actually create a fictitious procedure um, to solve the disease, to, to cure it. It dawned on me early on, the book started out to be about Kate and her tumor. But then one day, because I, I'm a, I meditate, and one day I'm meditating and I'm thinking, Kate needs a friend, and the friend is Emma, who grows up to be the doctor who finds the cure for the disease, and and that then became the story. It's a miraculous Let's, way sorry, that books evolve, isn't it? It's like the writer doesn't even know what's going to happen, and right. when you try to explain it to somebody who doesn't write, they don't get that. They think it's all planned out, but it isn't, at least it wasn't in my case. I mean, it's like Emma came along and she just wiped Kate right out. So I'm going to talk about that, but let me first talk a little bit about the reviews because this book is getting <laughs> some fabulous reviews and I, I know you're really happy with it. Let me, let me put a slide up on share on screen to show just one of those reviews that um, is from Samantha Verant, who is another fabulous um, debut author. And yes, I think Samantha's out next month. Her quote here is lovely. Yes, her quote's coming out. Her book is coming out in September, early September. Yeah. Um, the Secret French Recipes of Sophie Valroux, also a five-star read. I loved this book. Very different, very different, but um, a lot of fun. And it takes you to France and food and all kinds of wonderful things. We'll need to get her on here. 
Um, but I loved her quote because I thought it reflected a lot of what I'm seeing in the reviews. And there are so many over 35 star reviews on Goodreads for your book. And it only came out this month. So it's, it's amazing. Um, but I love this. It says a deeply moving novel about family, how the past shapes us and ultimately forgiveness, fierce and poignant, true to life stories. If you love those, don't miss this. And it fits with everything else that I, I've been seeing on Goodreads. I'll, I'll give you a sense of just some of the little things that I'm reading. It says powerful, um, will break your heart, but in the best way. Um, and in my own review, I talked about how it really was thought provoking. It really had me wondering about like choices we make in life and that balance of career and children. And, and when we feel like we have a purpose in life and how do we reconcile that? There were just so many great things about this novel. So congratulations. It really was a, a pretty fabulous novel. Thank you so much. That means so much to me. I am just so pleased with the reception this book is getting. Yeah. Is there anything in particular that, that has surprised you or that you've been particularly happy about? What has amazed me is people have reached out to me through email, through Facebook um, messaging, telling me stories of the losses they've gone through with family members and friends who have died from this disease and how my book just, even though it's fiction, it just made them feel better. People who could not stop reading the book and literally read it in one day. It, I never expected that. It wow. just amazed me. That's awesome. And is there is there anything that didn't make it into the book that or that changed dramatically? Like you say, where we start and where we end are very different. Is the ending pretty much stayed the same. But initially, and when I sent it to my the publisher, the book was a two person point of view. And the other point of view was Kate talking from heaven, explaining the whole process of when she was diagnosed and what it was like and her fears. And the first thing my editor said was Kate has to go. And I was devastated. Oh, I mean, it was literally 50% of the book. So I rewrote the book and we agreed that I could use one specific chapter and to actually two specific chapters. One is the prologue and one is the epilogue, which makes the book a better book. The editor was right. There's just no doubt about it. It, it made the book better, um, but I loved Kate. Kate was so outspoken and she was so not you would what you would expect from uh, an 11 year old child who's in heaven and but she was not the story. She was the impetus for the story, but she was not the story. The story was Emma and what she went through and what she gave up and what it saved. That That's was the story. I love that. And um, we're going to show readers in a couple of minutes in a minute here how to connect with you. But before we do, any books you've read recently that you would particularly recommend? Yes. And the one that I just finished is The Extraordinary Life of Sam Hell. And I love this book because what well, it's about a little boy who has a real disease called, and I can't think of the name of it, but basically instead of his eyes being brown or blue or gray, they're red. The author took this story about other than this disease and how this man dealt with it was like just a real life story. It was just a beautifully, beautifully written story. And you have a beautifully written story that people are saying is poignant. And the word beautiful came up a lot in the reviews too. And I love that you appreciate someone else's beautifully written story. Oh, I just really, I mean, it's like, it just really, this book really touched me. And of course, I just also finished, um, Chris Bajalian's book, The Red Lotus, which is about um, a global pandemic. 
And oh, wow. I have read every single one of his author's books. I love him. He is not only a great author, he is an extremely generous and gracious man. And probably that book, The Red Lotus, is one of my favorites. So let's talk about how readers can connect with you here. You okay. are Instagram and Facebook, but uh, here's your Instagram. It's Barbara Conroy, um, at Barbara Conroy on Instagram. Or, of course, they can connect on your website, barbaraconroyauthor.com. Um, it has been so fun to be here with you today. Um, thank you so much for doing the interview with me. And um, it's been lovely chatting. Thank you for having me, Lainey. I really appreciate it. Bye. Thanks.